Hello and welcome to the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're going to talk about pre-needs. What the heck is pre-needs, are you asking? I'm so glad you asked. I am excited to bring this series of March to you because it is the rainy season, it's hard to get out into cemeteries and it's a great time to talk to you about how to prepare for your death and the death of your loved ones. I don't mean to be morbid, but honestly, this is the best gift you could probably ever give anyone. And you won't be around to see it, but it will mean the world to somebody, I promise. Um, make sure you stick around to the end because not only am I gonna tell you what pre-needs are, how you can obtain them, why they're beneficial, but most importantly, why you need to do them right now. And it's not for the reasons you might think. Okay, so what is a pre-need? A pre-need is preparing and pre-financing your end of life care. And there are medical pre-needs. That's a whole different thing. What I'm talking about is your cemetery pre-needs. There's, that's kind of a two-part thing also. You can have pre-needs done with your funeral home and with your cemetery, or if they are like um, one in the same, some cemeteries have funeral homes. Um, if that's the cemetery that you're going to be buried in, you can go to one location instead of multiple locations. If you want to be, um, instead of cremated or embalmed or a green burial, if you want to be um, composted or, um, what is that called? Aquamated? <laughs> if you're going to be um, cremated by water, uh, through aquamation, you may have to go to a separate facility because because most um, funeral homes are not providing all the services. Um, also, there's other things like um, becoming part of uh, coral reefs. That is a whole a beautiful movement, but I think you might have to do your pre-needs maybe through their organizations as well. But um, what I what my expertise is on is cemetery pre-needs because I am a manager for a cemetery. And so I'm familiar with those pre-needs specifically. So obviously talk to your funeral home, talk to your cemetery manager, start um, researching the way that you want your, want to spend your, or where you want your body to be um, after you've passed away. And start preparing um, in all those areas and starting at your cemetery or your funeral home is a great place to get started and they can help direct you to all the other places that you might need to be. Now there's lots of companies that do pre-needs. Um, the company that we work with is called AFCTS. It's American Funeral and Cemetery Trust Services. So what happens is you prepay for your burial lot, the lot you're going to be buried in, you prepay for your um, the opening and closing of the grave, the administration fees, um, you might pay for uh, a second right of internment, that's um, something you can pay for. Uh, you might also prepay for a liner or a vault or a, a urn or an urn vault or all of the above. Um, you can also prepay for your headstone or what we typically call a marker. And you can also prepay for your final dates, <clears throat> which is, I'm gonna get into markers in another video, so make sure you stay tuned for that because that's coming up next week. I'm gonna go into an in-depth uh, tutorial on how to order a marker, uh, but a final date just means sometimes uh, people will order their markers. It'll have your name and your birthday on there. And then it'll just, you'll just leave a space for what's, what we call the final date, the day that you die, um, to be engraved at a later time. And 
when you do that, the each character um, on the marker costs a dollar amount, depending on the monument company that you work with. And if you prepay for that, then your loved ones don't have to pay for it in the future, uh, which is a nice thing. Um, so basically what a pre needs is, is you go into uh, your facility, you prepay for all of these services for when you die. And then the cemetery will send that money to a trust. And we do use AFCTS, but there's also Dignity is a national brand uh, that a lot of people are familiar with. There's many other companies that do it. I think, um, you know, regionally cemeteries tend to use different companies for whatever reason. Um, I don't even, I don't know how we ended up connected with AFCTS. It's just been the company that we've been working with and the company that our local funeral home works with um, over, the over the last 40 or 50 years anyway. Um, and so anyway, so your money goes into a trust and it has a teeny tiny bit of interest. And then when you pass away, your family brings us a death certificate proving that you've passed away. And we send the death certificate off to the trust company and they send us a check and that covers the costs of the opening and closing of the grave, the administration fees, um, and any other fees like the liner or the vaults or anything else that you may have pre-purchased. Um, it also will, part of that trust um, from the cemetery end is a percentage of the amount so if you buy a lot with us, um, a percentage of that profit will go to the trust into an endowment care fund. And that fund will come available to the cemetery when that section of the cemetery has completely come to capacity. So there's no more lots for sale in there, which means we can no longer make money off of that side of the cemetery. And so the trust will come to us so that we can pay our employees to continue to care for the cemetery in that area. Um, some cemeteries, the entire cemetery is under endowment funds. Some of them are partial. Um, it just depends on what the cemetery has decided to do in the past or what they decide to do in the future. Um, so let's see, I will talk to you about what is actually in the pre-needs contract. Basically, what, what you will do is you'll fill out a contract with your um, cemetery personnel and you're going to, it's going to obviously have the name of the cemetery, your name, um, a contract number, and it'll have your current address. It'll be important that you keep the cemetery and the trust services up to date on your um, address. It does require your social security number and date of birth. It also um, will ask who your next of kin is. It's not a, um, it's not like a will. It's not like this, this is the only person that could help. It's just that once you've passed, um, we kind of need to know who we might be able to reach out to and have conversations with. Um, Again, if you keep your cemetery up to date on that, it's very helpful for the future. It'll have your contract price, um, the, the payment that was received, how it was received, a check, if it's a check number, um, if it's a check, we'll get the check number, credit card, cash, all the things. Um, some cemeteries allow you to do monthly installments. Um, our trust, the AFCTS does allow monthly installments. That's an arrangement that you make with the trust service and not with the cemetery. Um, so that is an option. Uh, for us, our cemetery, we require you to purchase a lot outright. We don't include that in the pre-needs. That guarantees that lot is yours. You get the deed and it is yours forever. Um, and so then you purchase the lot and then you can prepay for your services and then those 
services is what you could do a monthly installment fee on if that's something that you needed. And do to do, there is cancellation, you know, policies if you needed it. There's ways that if you had to pull that those trust funds out, you could. It's just, you know, it's a it's a legal binding document, so you'd have to go through legal procedures to get the money back. Um, just like the sale of a home or something, it's cost of goods is on this other part of the contract. And it lists what you paid for. Um, did you pay for a liner, an urn, a vase, a vault, anything else? What kind of memorial did you prepay for? Is it bronze or granite? What's the description? Um, and then the services, the administration, engraving, installation, interment, etc. And so that's the other piece that you would get. And then you would get a, um, when you pass away or your loved one passes away, um, we would fill out this death claim affidavit and give them the contract number and the name of the deceased and the name of the cemetery. And we have to sign it as, um, we, we have to be, uh, what is it called? You know, I'm certified to sell through this company so that, um, they knew who I am and I know who they are and everything's legit. Um, and then they send us, they send the cemetery a check for the amount that the trust, um, has not just what you put into it, but also the, um, the interest. And I'm talking, the interest is so small. Some of these, um, pre needs that we receive, if they've been in the trust for like 30 plus years, it just barely covers our current day cost. And so, um, the pre needs is actually more beneficial to you and your family than it is to the cemetery. And then, um, what I wanted to say about that, the other thing that you might want to try doing, uh, to prepare for the end of your life is getting something like this. It's a, um, final planner and a final wishes planner. And this is different than like a will because it's actually going to talk about, it does have a space for like what checking accounts do you have and what, you know, bonds and stocks and stuff like that. What financial, um, things do you have? It talks about where to find your, the deed to your house or the insurance for your house and all those types of things. But it also talks about, um, it, oh, and it gives a place like, Hey, would you mind telling these people that I passed away? Which is really great because, you know, we all have these very diverse lives and not everybody in our family knows all the people that we know. So it's kind of nice. I mean, we do have social media now, so it's kind of easier to tell people in the far reaches that we've passed away. But it's also nice if you want to specifically say, can you reach out to this person and let them know that I've, I've moved on. Um, it talks about what to do with your pets, what to do with your belongings. And, but more importantly, it talks about what you expect from your funeral arrangements, where your pre-needs are, what um, cemetery you've put your pre-needs in, and what cemetery you expect to be placed in. It, t it gives you a place to put um, your lot number so that, or where your deed to your lot is so that people can easily find that. Um, what kind of arrangements do you want? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be in a, a casket? Do you want a green burial? Do you want to be composted? Do you want to be cremated? Um, and you have all those things in this book and it's really easy for someone to find and carry out your wishes. So that's a really nice thing to do uh, for your loved ones. Now, Getting the pre-needs is extremely beneficial to your family and the people who will take care of these things when you pass. So your partner 
or sometimes it's a best friend. It's more often than not a family member. When a person passes away, if you haven't experienced this yet, obviously it's extremely difficult and you can imagine that you will be very, very sad. But more than that, it's really hard to make decisions anyways. Like, what do you want for dinner? I don't know. I'm sad. <laughs> like sad food. Um, but it's even more difficult to make decisions about where does grandpa want to be buried? What, what does, where does he want to be? Does he want to be by the ocean or the mountains? Does he want to be like in his, in his family lot where his grandpa was? states and states away or does he want to be in the town that he spent most most of his time in what's important where does he want to be buried and if you're not having these conversations and you don't know and especially if it's not like concrete there's no telling where you might end up um things like what color marker what color granite does grandma want I'll tell you what, my mom probably would buy me a pink marker and that would make me really mad. So I, <laughs> she would love it. And there's something to say about doing things for the living, right? Because the living are the ones who are going to have to look at the marker. They're the ones who are going to look at the urn. So there's something to say about that uh, and honor. But at the same time, I believe that honoring the deceased is extremely important as well. So for me, having a pre-needs now ensures that I get what I want when I die so that nobody else can make a decision. So if I prepay for human composting or cremation, then it's already paid for. That's what I want and it's already set up and nobody has to make a decision. Nobody has to find another way to dispose of my body. It's already done. I already picked out my lot exactly where I want it to be. So nobody has to decide, does she want to be buried here? Does she want to be buried here? Does she want this view? Does she want to be by this person underneath this tree? Where does she want to be? I already picked it out. This is the spot I love. Nobody has to worry about it. Nobody has to think about it. Also, nobody has to pay for it, which is huge. A lot of times our deaths are completely unexpected. And honestly, even when we know the death is coming, it's not, you're not prepared. People are just not prepared for the death of a loved one. It's just, it hits you different. Every single time someone passes, a, a different type of emotion comes over you and you react differently and you just don't know. So it's so, so wonderful, such a beautiful gift to give family and loved ones this pre-arrangement done, done deal. So I highly encourage you to do it for the sake of your loved ones. Now, I promised I would tell you one reason you might not be thinking of why you want to get your pre-needs done today or ASAP. And that is because the prices are going up. They're just going up. There are more people in this world. There are less space for cemetery spots and the real estate is going up. The cost of services are going up. So if you go in and you pay for your pre-needs today, you get today's price. And it might mean that the cemetery in the long run either loses a little bit of money or barely breaks even, but it does mean that your family is not paying a lot more money in the future. Consider this. In 1975 in my cemetery, $50 bought you a lot. Today, our lots average $1,100 and they're going up this spring. And we are on the low end, the very low end 
of lot prices. When I do um, national lot price um, research, the average national lot price is $7,500. And it goes up from there. You wanna be buried in Hollywood you're, or, or LA area, you're guaranteed going to spend $15,000 or more. So consider doing your pre needs now. It saves you money, it saves your family money. If you're thinking, oh, well, then they could just pay for whatever the price is like later on down the road, there's no guarantee that money is gonna be there later down the road. So if you have the money now and you can make payments on it now, do it, do it for you, do it for your family and do it for your future generations. Now I'm gonna say this, we will talk a little bit more about um, plot purchases in another video, but consider when you buy a lot, most cemeteries allow multiple people to be buried on your lot especially if they're cremated urns. So in our cemetery, one lot holds eight urns. So you're talking about really providing a lot for your entire, a, a big portion of your family if you choose to share your lot like that. So that's, that's my spiel on pre-needs. And like I said, you can do this with your funeral home. I can't go into a lot of specifics about that, but if you went to your funeral home for pre-needs, you would be talking about the cost of embalming, the cost of cremation, the, and anything that's encompassing with that or green burials, like the shroud that you might need or the boards that are required and I don't know all the details there. Um, caskets, obviously, if you were embalmed, or not embalmed, and all those things can be um, worked out with your funeral home. So that's important as well because, again, it makes sure that you get what you want when you pass, and it takes that guesswork out for the family. Plus, it takes that financial strain off when someone passes away and you're dealing with everything in their lives. Like, you know, someone passes away, you're trying to figure out how to pay off their mortgage, how to pay off their car, how to clear their credit card debt. And then you have to also pay for all of their death care needs, hospital needs usually, insurance needs sometimes. And then of course, the actual, you know, what to do with the body. So Consider your family and do them a favor and do yourself a favor and make sure that you get what you want and get your pre needs done and save a little bit of money by doing it right now. That is, I think, everything as far as pre needs go. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in the link in the comments below and I will try to answer them the best that I can. And again, this is not an affiliate. Uh, marketing for AFCTS or any other company. I'm just letting you know that there are trust services out there that you can do your pre-needs with. And the best uh, way to go about doing that is just pop into your local cemetery and ask them how you get started today. Until the next time, keep celebrating your life and we will see you in the next video. Bye.